Sorry, folks, if you're out there, go ahead and tune in to Facebook Live. We hope that you've joined us. This is week three, and I am still on the struggle bus. I like the struggle bus, though. You learn a lot on the old struggle bus. So uh, there we are. I just want to see these great faces. So welcome to all of our viewers. It is April 15th, COVID-19 in the year 2020. Remember that date because I believe there's some out there tonight that are going to look back on this night as a milestone or a marker. I love milestones and markers in our life. When our kids are born, when we buy our first house, when we do something impressive, but the greatest milestone or marker you can ever look back on in your life is the day that you realize that you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I believe tonight you're going to hear so much about that, that God's grace is going to stir in you. And I believe some people are going to make a decision to truly go all in with Jesus. So the Jesus we celebrated from our homes this past weekend can truly change your life. But before we get started, I want you to know a couple of things. Make sure you visit our website. We have all sorts of resources for you at fcawrestling.org. Check out our FCA Wrestling podcast on Spotify and iTunes. Just search FCA Wrestling. You're going to hear stories of some of the greatest wrestlers of all time and how the, the work that God's doing in their life. We also have a new study coming out, diving into the Gospel of John. We believe this. You really begin to grow in your relationship with Christ when you begin to practice, just like in the sport of wrestling. You don't get much better at wrestling when you don't go to practice. And the way that we practice is we dig into God's Word. We have a new uh, study diving into the Gospel of John. We're just waiting for them to be shipped from the warehouse because of this COVID-19 crisis. So here's what we would say. Stay safe and be patient. I'm super excited about our guest tonight because here's what both of them are. They are overachievers, and you are going to love hearing their stories. Olympic champ and women's wrestling trailblazer, Helen Morales and Elevation Church Pastor Larry Bra. So, hey, Larry and Helen, thanks so much for being here with us tonight. We're super excited to have you on. Yeah, excited to be with you guys. I mean, this is a pretty incredible lineup. Look at the caliber of you. And then you got Mark and then you got Helen here. I'm like, I'm the, I'm the fourth, fourth player in this. Nobody's going to remember this guy tonight. I mean, look at this lineup. Hey, I've done a great job of, of, of always being the dumbest guy in the room. And I did it again tonight. Usually the ugliest too. So <laughs> Helen, th Helen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys. This is awesome. And now I'm, I'm truly honored to be around you all. And so and Pastor Larry, has been my pastor for a while, so I'm definitely blessed by that. Well, that, that's interesting you say that. Um, I mean, that's really my first question is really how you two specifically on tonight, we asked you guys to join us and you guys, um, you guys jumped on and jumped at the opportunity. So how do you guys know each other? Tell us, tell us about that. Um, Larry Bry goes by LB and then Helen. How, how do you guys know each other? Yeah, um, Helen, I'll let you tell that story. Okay. So in 2010, I got saved. And in 2011, my coach at the time, Kevin Black, introduced me to Elevation Church uh, services online. And so I started watching and um, he connected. He just reached out to Larry. I don't know if he formally knew you, but he um, connected me with Larry and, you know, we had the wrestling connection. And so I just kept watching sermons and then leading up to the Olympics, um, you know, we just kept chatting and then Pretty much uh, Pastor LB kind of just mentored me and pastored me into that journey. And uh, he <laughs> definitely received a lot of phone calls from a nervous, uh, anxious girl going into the biggest moment of her life and um, just helping me to seek God in that. <laughs> yeah, and Kevin, he's, he's a good man. I've never met Kevin. We've only connected via social media and text oh, messages. Yeah. I was going to meet him at the NCAAs. Unfortunately, COVID stopped that whole thing. But um <laughs> I had preached a sermon at Elevation Church where I talked about wrestling. He showed it at one of his wrestling camps. That's how we got connected. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so it was just kind of that thing. And then we got connected and yeah, got a chance to spend time with you. And so I live vicariously through Helen. I tell people I didn't win a gold medal. I always wanted one as a kid. You know, growing up, I had all the Olympic wrestling team posters on my walls. I always said my goal in life was to have Olympic gold. So I kind of feel like I vicariously won one through, through Helen. Hey, hey good. God works in mysterious ways. You know, it's, it, it's interesting. Helen, it, it's so, and I was so impressed when, when we talked today, but you know, what, what's unique about your story is that when you go all in, great things happen. I mean, it's, whether it's in the sport of wrestling, it's in marriage, it's in parenting. When you go all in and you really put your yes on the table, 
great things happen. And the other thing about that that's unique is that when you really want something, you will find a way to make it happen. So even through the internet and making connections, you said, I want to follow after Jesus and I need some help. If you want to be an Olympic gold medalist, you got to have help. And if you want to be a, if you want to be great in the Christian faith, you have to have, you have to surround yourself uh, with the right people. I always say this, there's only been one guy to fight the devil one-on-one and win. Uh, and, uh, he, he's not on this zoom call tonight. (laughs) So, uh, Helen, you have been a trailblazer for the sport of wrestling. I mean, like, I don't even think you realize how like monumental all that you've done. You're going to look back in 30, 40 years and go, wow, man, I was like the Pat summit of, of, or even more so, you know, of, of women's wrestling. Tell me about, you know, you, aside from winning a bunch of gold medals, which we know you have, what are you most proud of on this journey? Oh man, I think what I'm most proud of on this journey and, and the biggest thing, because I've always said, like, for me, pursuing sport is, is pursuing my faith. Um, it's just seeing uh, the works that God's brought me, brought me through and the, the way he's used wrestling to shape me as a person and to shape my character. And so uh, Pastor LB can actually tell you this too. I wrote a journal the day before I competed at the Olympics and I said, thank you, God. You know, I, I already have my gold medal. I wanted to learn the fruit of the spirit. I wanted to learn perseverance and resilience and these are the things that are going to carry me in life and like a gold medal I can't tangibly do anything with it you know like I'm, I can't pay for my groceries I mean it's like it's just this object but what God gave me through this journey of like pursuing the things I love and experiencing defeat and then trying to climb back from that and all, all those little lessons um, that I'll take with me forever so it's invaluable wow that that is I mean I, I call those long haul attributes yeah. yeah, I mean, That's- they're, they're with you forever, man. It's, it's so impressive. And for you to have the maturity to recognize, hey, whether I win or whether I lose, I've already received. I love what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9. You know, he says, hey, man, they do it for a perishable wreath. And in those days, it was literally like Christmas yes. wreath. You know, <laughs> they do it for a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. And for you to realize that even in those moments, and we told you this today, like, girl, you don't even know the things God has in store for you. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm going to stop talking. Go, Mark. Now, what's cool about that, though, if I could add on to that, I remember oh, the dude. day before she won gold, she sends me this journal entry because we'd been talking back and forth. And it was this breakthrough that you could really feel and see the tangible grace of God come over her. Because if, if I could, it, one of the things that's always impressed me about Helen is, you know what it's like when you're in the sport, everybody tries to conform you into the image of th- something they think you should be. And so everybody's always tried to make her be something that she's not. And she's always had this drive to discover her unique identity in Christ. That's the biggest wrestling match I've seen her win in her, her life is that thing. It's just, it's beautiful to watch. Dude, folks better be careful. We're about to have church here. Yeah. All right? We are about to have church. I love it. Dude, I'm getting fired up, man. Me too. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> man, uh, LB. So um, the, the next question is this, it's, it's, and, and you've actually, um, a couple of times, I think the first time I reached out to you, um, I, I actually had a couple of fights in, 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 in a cage, if you guys know what that is. And, and I remember calling and saying, man, I don't know if I should take another fight. There's actually a fight kind of offered to me. And I'm like, I don't know where, which direction I'm supposed to go. And, and, um, and I reached out to you actually. And I remember um, I didn't do, I didn't take either path that I, that I, that I threw your way. I'm in ministry, full-time ministry now and super grateful for that. But um, another time was recently, um, I kind of went through a family tragedy and man, just, uh, uh, just super encouraged by, um, just some, some, some talks that we had. And then another time was, um, man, I was talking about balance as I was getting into ministry and I was trying to figure out how to, I mean, I want to do, uh, ministry to the best of my ability to do it. Like I'm doing unto the Lord, yeah. but it was really trying to find a, f- you know, a, a, a family and a ministry balance and, and, trying to find this balance. And you actually said you didn't like the word balance and you sent me this little voice message and I'll never forget it. I saved it. I listened to it all the time. Um, but you just said you like rhythms, you call them rhythms and you don't like balance. So talk about that a little bit if you could. Well, I remember the first time I talked to you is I was, I was in a hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was getting ready to preach. And uh, cause I knew who you were. And then when you reached out via, uh, D you DM me and we exchanged back and forth. And you know how sometimes you, you, you like somebody before you, um, so you see somebody at a distance and you like them so much more before you actually met them. Um, you are a guy that I liked you from the outside. Then once I got to see you, I liked you even more. And every conversation I've had with you, it's just like, 
man, your, 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 your love for the Lord is infectious. And I think that that's what, that's, that's what's so cool. But I don't think any of us probably got to where we're at in life trying to be balanced. And I do, I, I don't, I, cause balance is an artificial means to maintain an equilibrium that God never intended us to have. I, so healthy for me is all of me is in this moment. Sometimes what balance does, it tries to distribute what God wants to invest. And you're trying to redistribute energy to things that God said, no, that's not in front of you right now. So when I'm on the phone with you in Tulsa, I can take you back to the seat I was sitting in because I said, Lord, let me give Mark my best, best version of me. I know I got to go preach in a little bit, but let me give Mark my best version of me. So balance, I don't believe in it because if balance would have been like, wait, I can't take that call right now because I got to go get ready to preach. No, my kids in front of me, they're going to get the best version of me. Who's ever in front of me. So the rhythm is understanding where God has me. All of me is in that moment. My mind, my soul, my spirit, everything. So I want to coach people like be all in in that moment. Now have some schedule to your life, but understand the season. Because a farmer, when it's time to harvest, you can't be somewhere else. You need to be harvesting. Wow. And so, so yeah, I just... I'm, I'm, I got such a highly addictive personality, man. And it got me into a lot of trouble, but it also is a gift that when it's going the right direction, it moves people the right way. Dude, Larry, say that, say that phrase again. You can't distribute evenly. Say, say that again. I made that up, man. I, I don't go. Just do go. People should be taking notes right now. Get out your pen and paper. Come I know, on. dude. It's, it's, it's this artificial means. To, to, to try to, to, to distribute energy that God says, no, like whatever's in front of you, that's your ministry. Mm -hmm. So what I can't do is I can't withhold from my relationship with my wife because I know I have to do something later mm -hmm. or vice versa. But all Man. of me needs to be in that moment. Man. And so I just, I do, I, I do horrible with balance. It's just, it's this myth because here's the thing. I can't win everywhere at once. You can't. So, so good. I, I've got to understand where I need to win right now. That's going to get my energy. I can't win there right now, but I can't win everywhere at once. In, in the athletic world, we would call that focus, tunnel vision. Like, yeah. you know, in, in the spiritual world, what, what comes to my mind is like Jesus is, I mean, he's the master teacher, leader, whatever. I mean, put any category with it. He, you know, we worry about it. As I work with kids, you know, everyone asks, well, what's my calling or what's this? I'm like, listen, your calling simple, follow Christ. Yeah. And if you follow him today, He'll get you. If you are intent on following him today, he will land you where you need to be tomorrow. Yeah. And really that's, that's just having, I'm just going to go with him, man. And when he puts me in front of this, when he gives me this assignment, I'm all in. When he gives me this assignment, I'm all in. So God, that is like, dude, that's good, man. I don't want to get off this call tonight. So Larry, I mean, obviously you're, you're a gifted teacher and, and, and a pastor, but what, what's your wrestling background? Like, you know, I heard you did a little officiating. How'd that go for you, buddy? Oh, that was rough in North Carolina. So I grew up in Minnesota, one of five hey, kids. Time out, time out. <laughs> but we've seen the videos. We know officiating in North Carolina is rough because we saw the uh, yeah. somebody get plowed or whatever this year. Yeah, that was uh, maybe not a high water mark from, from yeah. the wrestling. But but I grew up in Minnesota, five kids. So I had, I had two older brothers who used to beat the daylights out of me. So they all were wrestling. So I started wrestling in first grade. So wrestled into high school and then into my freshman year of college where I blew up my elbow. Um, and so I've always been around the sport my whole life, came to North Carolina, gosh, 15, 20 years ago, um, started officiating here, but we started this church in Charlotte. That's now kind of a big church elevation church. And it was about year three of the church I'm officiating. And I'm now going to schools where a lot of the people know me from as pastor LB, but nobody knows anything about the sport of wrestling. Cause most people don't start until like ninth grade here. So I'm officiating a match. Some parent thinks I've cost their kid the match because they don't know the rules. And she yells at the top of her lungs, I'm never coming back to your church again. <laughs> Last match I ever officiated. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it, it is crazy, man. So you, it, you grew up in a wrestling family, man. Yeah. My, old, my older brothers did. I'm, I started, yeah. Um, I was uh, for 45 pounds in first grade. I was a state champion, 45 pounds. I still have the trophy. Dang, that's crazy. Helen, come on, tell us, I mean, obviously people know your success, but in all of our lives, there's this crossroads where, you know, with Tom Ryan, we saw tragedy led him on this search for the truth. With Jordan Burroughs, it was triumph. 
uh, he gets everything and realizes, dude, I'm still not at peace. Like there's something missing. Uh, mm -hmm. What led you and what was it that took place that led you to this place to say, man, I'm going to follow after the person of Christ and surrender fully to him? Oh, man. I know that may be personal. No, no. I love talking about this stuff. So I started wrestling when I was seven. So wrestling was my religion before I ever knew about um, Jesus. And so everything was about wrestling, going anywhere, doing anything for the sport. I mean, I moved all over. I was obsessed with it. Um, and then in 2012, I, I became a Christian in 2010. And then I remember in 2012, I, you know, everything I had qualified the way for the Olympics. I was in the finals of trials. I for sure was like, all right, God, I, I'm, like, I really believe that I'm supposed to win a gold medal one day. And I was like, you know, thank you. If you let me win, I'll do everything right. I'll be your perfect <laughs> person. I'll be this great Christian. And then I, I lost and, uh, and it was heartbreaking. And I remember being angry and mad at God. And I was like, I'm done. I retire. I hate this sport. I hate wrestling. I don't like you either, God. <laughs> you know, like I just, um, and I never walked away from him, but I was mad and I was kind of like, whatever, I'm going to sulk. And that's that when you're ready, just fix it, you know? And, um, and I remember I was reading in, in, in my Bible one day and it was like, I just felt like God was like, what if you're not David or Moses um, or Peter? Like, what if you're not one of those people where your name's never in the Bible? Like, what if you're just one of the 5,000 that gets fed that day? Is that enough for you? Wow. And I was like, oh, you know, like I wanted to be the, the king and the queen on the chessboard. I didn't want to be a pawn. And, um, and I just remember being like, all right, like, yeah, let, let's do it this way. And so I said, you know what, God, I don't care about winning a gold medal. I don't want to ride the highs and lows of losing anymore. It's heartbreaking. And I know I'm not doing life correctly because I'm miserable over these material things. And um, I was like, I'll give you four years of my life and you just, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. And, uh, and I was like, but not because I want you to give me a gold medal. I was like, I want you to let me walk away from the sport in peace. I just, I don't want regret. I don't want the way, I don't want to feel the way I did in 2012. And, um, and he just totally changed my life. I mean, not just my wrestling, my whole life felt like it went from black and white to in color. And uh, it was just amazing. You are so impressive, man. That's unreal. I love that word peace. And in Colossians, Paul uses that word peace. And in, in the actual Greek, it's this word, arane, which, which means without anxiety. Like when we really give our lives to Christ, like, and say, all right, my yes is on the table, the results. I mean, I'll put in the work, but I mean, sometimes you put in the work and you don't get what you want. Uh, man, like that picture of you coming to that place is absolutely like, I mean, one, it's beautiful. And two, it's like, that is where we all have to get. I mean, if you really want to experience the abundant life, life and life to the fullest, that's the, that's the place you have to get. So man, yeah. thank, thanks for sharing. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this, this question is really for both of you guys. Um, but I'm going to kind of um, push it towards you more, a little bit more, LB. Um, so it's just discipleship. Um, FCA, I mean, we, we, are, um, we are discipleship ministry and, and discipleship multiplication. And, and um, you know, obviously it's, it's athletes and co it's coaches and athletes, but there's been a lot of athletes, um, professional athletes and, you know, uh, ladies and men like Helen and, and that have connected with you and, and went through Elevation Church. Um, I guess the question is really this, what is discipleship to you? Um, and, and I mean, what does that look like? What does it look like for someone to get discipled? Um, Helen, I mean, I'd, I'd ask you the same question after, after LB, but um, you, you mentioned earlier on our call that you were getting discipled by, by somebody at this time. And, and what is it, what is that to you? What does that look like? Yeah, I, I think I would start with my own life first before I talk about it for, for somebody else. I mean, so for me, uh, wrestling was an escape. And so as a kid, it was a real, it was a real chaotic home. Dad was an alcoholic, very abusive. And so for me, um, wrestling was this escape, a place where I felt like I had some control. I remember the first match in high school, I've made the varsity team in seventh grade. And so my older brother, Butch, he's on the team. His real name is Leslie, but he went by Butch. You would too, if you were named Leslie. <laughs> and uh, so, we're, so I'm, I'm the first seventh grader in the high school ever to make the, the, high, the varsity team. First match of the year, I'm wrestling a guy who was a junior. He was fourth in the state the year before. He's got a full beard. I don't have any armpit hairs. And I'm just scared out of my mind. And, but I remember my dad coming into the gymnasium. He always wore cowboy boots, and he was drunk. And I remember the sound of his boots walking up the bleachers. 
I go up and I lose seven to two. And every, my whole team, my brothers are so excited. Like, you didn't get stuck. But the only voice I heard in the whole gym was my dad saying, boy, wait till you get home. So I go home. My dad beats the daylights out of me and said, son, you're not going to be a loser. So if you're going to be a loser, you're going to quit. Okay, so now I know I can never depend upon him. But what happens is what starts as escape can become a prison. So for me, my identity became, became wrapped up in this escape that became this prison that entangled me as I lived my life. What discipleship is, is inviting somebody in to tell, take off the chains so that you can walk in freedom. Christ saves you. It's a gift. But to walk in freedom is a work. So we have to work it out, but I cannot do it by myself. What he said earlier, it's got to be done in community. I need other people to take off the chains with me. So discipleship okay. is letting somebody close enough to see past the false identities and false labels. Because once you lose that, what Helen just so eloquently talked about is like, man, when wrestling's over, am I enough? Can I tell you my biggest fear in life? My biggest fear in life is that me as a person, I'm not enough. Like, do I always have to have a sermon? Do I always have to have a teaching? Can me just by myself? So at the bottom of it all, discipleship is giving somebody access to help me grow in the word of God so that I can see more of who he is in light of that. What does it say about me? Man, so good. I love what Paul says. He says, work out your salvation. Yes. Because it, it, it's got at work in you. I mean, he's the power. Uh, it, it, I think it's energeo that's the wordage there, but like work out your salvation because it's got at work in you, but we need people around us to help us. I mean, you can't win wrestling matches by yourself. You, you need a team and a community and workout partners. So, Well, Lazarus, he gets called forth from the grave by Jesus. Jesus resurrected him. And then it says he instructed them to take their grave clothes off. Hmm. So you're saved by yourself, but you have to be redeemed in community. Wow. So That's good, cool. man. Dude, it's Resurrection. so good. <laughs> Resurrection was the gift, but to Dude. walk in freedom means I need some other people to take the, the grave clothes off. Wow. And that's what we do for one another. Dude. Alan, uh, I mean, what does that, what does that look, like, look like for you? I mean, when, when you think of discipleship or when you think about being discipled, what does that look like for you in your words? Yeah, so I actually have a cool story. Um, after 2016, I met this uh, woman named Leah Ferguson at, um, I think at, uh, Kevin Black did an FCA camp um, in Wisconsin. And I heard her speak and I just went up and I said, can, can you work with me? Can I speak to you weekly? Like, I'm one of those people, I, man, I just, like, com community is everything. And um, she said, hey, let's pray about it. And like, yeah, I do discipling. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we'll just chat and I can tell you my problems. And she's like, no, this is like very intentional. Like, we're going to pray about how long we're doing this for. We're going to pray about what you want out of it. And every time we talked, it was just about her journeying with me to help me figure out, um, you know, how to learn about God more, how I learn about God. And she helped me to kind of realize, oh, I hear best from God, you know, doing, doing this, maybe journaling or alone time or like, she just helped identify patterns and really helped me kind of like, um, Pastor LB was saying like, work out my faith and, and, you know, work, work it out. And, um, it's been so life changing. And I just want to share too, because, uh, if someone, you know, people ask all the time, like, Oh, what does it take to win? And, and it's like, yeah, hard work. And, and all those things are obviously a given, but I really think one of the biggest things for me is like the community that I have, like the people that God's blessed me with, like literally up until the very moment I'm on the mat, like they're, like I call people, I, I've called Pastor LB like the day of a tournament or the night before I've called mentors and I'm telling you, it's, you cannot, I, I just don't know how, I don't know how to do it alone. And I felt very weak-minded for a long time. Like, oh, you know, do I need other people? Should I know how to do this on my own? But um, I don't know when I look at, at in the Bible and Paul talks about like, I put no confidence in human effort. And so I think as athletes, there's a lot of pressure that like you need to be self-sufficient and self-confident. And I, I personally don't think that you need that much, like to that extent, as much as you need like healthy people around you to help like see the things that you can't see and walk with you through that. That's awesome. Man, it's so good. I think the enemy tricks us and, and deceives us because that's what he does. I mean, he has th th three minutes, steal, kill, and destroy. I mean, that's his, that's his deal. He, he wakes up every day wanting to do that in our lives. And the, the enemy loves us to believe that isolation is good. And that's what shame does in us. You know, we, we fall short, and so we feel shame, and then we hide. It's what Adam and Eve did in the garden, and it's what we do. 
And, and really, God says, listen, man, don't run and hide. Run for help. And one of the places we run for help is the local church. I love, here's why I love FCA, Larry, is because we understand that we, we have gaps. And we believe, our, our vision, I'm going to read it to you right off the page, but our mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. We want to plug people into the local church. So why is the church, I mean, from, from a pastor's perspective, and it's what I love about having you on tonight is, how important is being plugged into a local church as a, as a growing believer? Because some would say, oh, just, it's my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, gosh, there's people who are like, my, my church is the golf course and my church is the lake. And, and yeah, because we're created in the image of God. I can't turn them into my image. Like, so we're called to worship him, not an idol that we've created and what, he think he, what we think he looks like. And the thing Jesus died for is the thing we should be living for. Jesus died for his church. So when he rose in victory and he sent his spirit back, it broke out Pentecost, but it established the church. And we've been walking the tradition of the church, the ecclesia, the local gathering, the, bro the brother and his sister to come together, to admonish, to encourage, to study the word of God. And we're imperfect. We got a lot of issues, but it's a beautiful broken community that God knits together to show his tapestry to the world. But I believe all relationship is what God wants the things to flow from. So when I'm in relationship with you and you're in relationship with me, we create community. But it's under this guise of the church, the body of Christ, to see people one to it. And it's a beautiful thing to see in motion. I'm, I'm a part of a church in Charlotte. We started it. My wife and I were part of starting Elevation Church 14 years ago. We sold our homes and quit our jobs to start this thing. Now we've got 20 locations with about 35,000 people on a weekend. And it's... And that's not including our online community, but it's, it's beautiful to see the church be the church. So, so let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, so there's a lot of people out there, and I hear these, these critics that say, well, the church is full of hypocrites and all these different things. And it's like, listen, when your standards perfection, hypocrisy is inevitable. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so what do you say to the, to the, uh, the skeptic who says, well, you know, I, I'm just not sure about that. Like, what is the invitation? Yeah, it, and I would say that the church is full of a bunch of hypocrites. Absolutely. Because I'm there. <laughs> yes, and so that's, that's why I love where we're at. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. When you lose all of the style with the lights and the camera and the adult, all you have is substance. And if you've been trying to impress everybody with sizzle and you have no steak to feed the people, they starve. And so there are lots of great churches out there but you want to find one that's got great substance. And it's not just, we got a lot of lights, we got cameras, we got that stuff, but we got the word of God. And so what we want to tell people is find a church where you're going to get fed the word of God, and it's going to walk you through what, who God is and what he says about you. And, and I would say to our viewers out there too, is listen, man, you're not going to find perfection. There, there's, I mean, as long as there's humans running the church, there's imperfection, but don't go to the church looking for the human, go to the church seeking Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when you understand the grace of Jesus in your life, it's a lot easier to overlook and forgive some of the in, in, insufficiencies uh, in other people's lives. So man, to, to our viewers out there from our staff at FCA, and we have a ton online on Facebook, uh, you know, commenting and, and doing some things, but we really would encourage you and we would be glad to help you uh, get plugged into a local church. We're connect, we'll connect you with a local FCA guy and get you plugged into a local church. It's awkward at times when you first go in. Here's what you have to do. Check your ego at the door, be humble, and seek Jesus. Here's what I can promise you. He'll show up every single time when you're looking for him. So, Mark. No, it's it's so good. I, I just, I feel like I'm I'm getting fed right now. This is good. Um you know, one of the things I'm most passionate about is, is just, I mean, just continual pursuit of, 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 of Jesus. And it's, it's, it's daily now. And it's, it's changed my life over the last, you know, five, six years. It's, you know, four, five, six years, it's, it's changed my life completely. So, man, I would love, um, I'd like to ask you first, Helen, um, and, and then, and then LB, but what are some things that we could, I mean, that we could do um, for our viewers, that we could do to grow in our, in our faith, uh, to grow in our relationship with the Lord on a daily basis. I mean, maybe it's as simple as 
you know, I, I call LB or, or, you know, I, uh, I go to church, but what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, so I'll just share, cause this has kind of been like, you know, 2016 was this amazing uh, moment that I had with God. And so I thought I was like so far in my faith. And then I feel like I had like this other cool, like breaking ground moment, um, uh, back, you know, about half a year ago now. So, um, it's just cool how, how God will kind of blow your mind with that. But I would share the two biggest things or a few biggest things I've learned for myself is, um, one, your relationship with Jesus is um, personal. Uh, you you go to church because it's like community and, and you can get fed and you can learn the word and you can you can share things as well. But um, the, your relationship with Jesus is still Jesus. He lives inside of you and, and he speaks to you. So I remember I heard a quote and it said, your level of promotion determines your level of rest. And, um, and so it was saying like every time you get promoted or your platform gets bigger, your alone time with God should get bigger as well. And wow. um, that that really blew my mind because I didn't have a grip on that after Olympics. And I feel like I just kind of, I, you know, I, I squeezed all the juice out and I wasn't like getting filled back up. So now that's one thing where I'm like, I want to protect my relationship with Jesus at all times. Like I want to make sure it's always something that's flowing and feeding. And sometimes wow. when I'm talking to a bunch of people about Jesus, I feel like that's the same thing, but it's not like talking about him a bunch is not the same as like, having my personal space with him. And then with that, that's freed me up so that when I go to church, which I think is so powerful, so important. And, uh, and I think we've all had our experience where maybe we felt like we didn't fit in or, you know, this isn't the right one yet, but again, it's like wrestling. You just, you stick with it until you get the movie, you stick with it because God will always, when you're walking by faith, he will always bring, bring the right stuff into your life. And so, um, you know, then when you're having that personal relationship with Jesus, um, then you can go and not just go to church to like, you need to give me Jesus. It's more like, oh, I already have Jesus and I'm here to, to continue to learn or to be part of the church. And where can I serve? And, and what part of the body am I? Because we're all a part of the body and we all have different functions. And so it's been really cool to, to just start to experience community through that. And um, those were my, my two big things. Hey, can, can we, will you repeat that? that you, I mean, I, repetition is the key to learning, especially when you're an idiot like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Re- repeat what you talked about as your platform grows, like your, your time with God. Say, say that again. That, that's too good to not so, go, go back on. So that's a Graham uh, Cook quote. And I, I listened to one of the sermons on YouTube about it. And what he discussed, um, geez, it's in the New Testament, but I forgot what, um, was it Hebrews? No, he talks about entering God's rest. And like the blessing that God tells us is like, we can always enter his rest. And like, that's, you know, that's where our safety, that's where we get fulfilled. And so he was saying the level of your promotion has to determine the level of your rest. So when you have like 10 new expectations or 10 new things or speaking platforms, like you need to make sure that you're also going and getting that rest and alone time with God. And I, I mean, that's, that was, I don't probably not doing it justice the way he said it, but that just really stuck with me. Um, because I lived it uh, from failing at it. So now I'm like, okay, I, I got to make sure I do that. Hey, tr- true story. Cause I, I want our people to know that we don't have it figured out. Mm-hmm. You know, e- even last year, a guy named Mark Ellis, he's, I'm actually looking at him on the camera right now. I, I'm, I'm a goer, man. It's just go, go, go. I'm, I'm a, you know, just speak, 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 invest, 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 encourage, encourage, encourage. And, and you know, he called me out, man. He said, listen, dude, you got some issues, man. You, you have got to rest. Like God is calling you to be still. And that is so hard for an athlete because like you said earlier, Helen, it's like, it's effort, effort, effort. And, and sometimes God's saying, just listen, listen, listen. And so I, I want to just admit that, man, this is a struggle for me, uh, for, for a person who, you know, your gift is encouraging and, and teaching. And it, it's like, you have to surround yourself. We said it, I think, in the per- first podcast. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You're the five of the sun. You know, you're some of the five people you surround yourself with, all the catchphrases. But, like, at the end of the day, you need to have some people in your life that will tell you, hit the pause button. Slow down. And I, I, I want to give a shout-out to Coach Ellis for, for being that in my life. That, to me, that's a form of discipleship, is wise counsel and in, in saying that. So, LB, your go. I- I, yeah. I had similar issues. That's, that's why I called you out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I also want to say about Helen, it's really easy to give some quotes to try to be impressive. And what, what, what I've seen with Helen is she's lived all those things out. That's awesome. And so it's really easy to be impressive on the stage, but a, a, it's easy to be a public success and a private failure. Wow. And 
but what I want to say about Helen is everything she just told you, she's lived it out. I mean, the road to success is up and down, it's back and forth. It's, it's, but she's always moved forward with this relationship with the Lord that's real and it's abundant. And so for those that might be struggling with like, gosh, what she talks about, I can't get there. She can also tell you about the hard nights and all the struggles, but she's made, remained focused. Use that word earlier. Like she's remained focused on the Lord. And, and so I, don't, I think it's awesome for me. I, I don't know. I think when I was, I didn't come to faith until I was mid, in my mid twenties. I'm in graduate school, life bottoms out. I went out and got drunk and drunk again. Cause for me, I grew up, I grew up wanting to not be at home. My whole goal in life was to not be there, but a vision in life isn't running from something. It's running to something. Mm. And so in graduate college, I come home drunk and I look in the mirror and I became, I'm becoming the person I hated the most. It was my dad. And I'm like, the person I have hated my whole life, I'm becoming. That's what bitterness does. But when I came to faith in Jesus, I had this shallow definition that faith meant life gets easier. I didn't know that faith and struggle were opposite sides of the same coin. And so as I go through life, as I go to new levels of faith, it exposes new struggles in me. I, I broke, I, trivia point, I've had uh, 11 surgeries and 19 different broken bones. So... I broke this wrist in high school, but about six or seven years ago, I was lifting really heavy weights. And I go to my friend who's an orthopedic surgeon. I said, what's going on? He'd take an x-ray. He said, oh, what happened is when you broke that, they put the plate in, it stopped it growing. So your bone is about a half a centimeter shorter than it should be. I said, why has it never bothered me before now? He said, you've never had enough weight on it to expose it. So what happens is we go through life, God takes us from glory to glory, weight to weight, and it exposes things that have always been there. But if I don't understand the signs, I'll feel like I'm failing. That's actually an indication you've taken new territory. Wow. And so, because the devil will flip it on you. Oh, uh, man. Why, why am I struggling with this? No, God's saying you're ready to deal with the whole new devil on this level that you haven't been ready to fight before. Man, I <clears throat> I did a coach's webinar on, shoot, golly, I, I feel like, you know, every now and then I speak and someone goes, I feel like you were talking to me. I feel like you guys are talking to me tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, like the Lord is working in me. But we were, we, we talked about, we had some tornadoes come through Chattanooga this weekend. It, it was actually very devastating. And so we looked at Matthew 7 where, you know, Jesus finished the Sermon on the Mount. It's like, you know, whoever does these words of mine, uh, you know, whoever hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man. You know, the rains fall, the floods come, and the winds blow. And whoever doesn't do it is like a foolish man. You're a moron, you know? Same circumstances. But this summer, I was sitting on my back porch, and I'd been studying that passage. My wife is a musician. And she, you know, th this is what, the, the, what was pressed upon me. And it was like, we, we don't build our life on a foundation that is firm, the foundation of Christ, just to withstand the beating. We also do it so that we can receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. And so like if, if God's love's like a hurricane and I want to absorb it, I better have a strong foundation or I'm not even ready for it. And, you know, some of those things as he moves us forward, it's like, you know, I look at my own life and go, God, man, the, you can't even provide this because I'm not ready for it, man. I'm not mature enough to handle how good you really are. And so, man, you two are like, I don't know, man. I don't want to, we're going to not go Facebook live and just keep going for like two hours. Just keep having church. But Mark, go, man, you're up. I need to take a deep breath. No, I, uh, man, this is so good. Um, and appreciate you both so much. This is uh, so encouraging to me. And I know to so many, I'm getting texts right now, encouraging to many others as well. So appreciate you both so much. But um, there's, there's a guy I listen to, a ministry leader that I listen to. Um, and it's usually late at night. And, and I say this, every Facebook, the last two Facebook lives that we've done, but it's, it's really helped me. I also read this book called living forward. You kind of start at the end, you know, where you want to end and then you work your way back. And so, um, daily, I think about this and this is my question to both of you, Helen, you go first though. Um, when you leave this earth, you know, what is it that you want to be said about you? And, and the way this guy s states it is, you know, what do you want written on your tombstone? So, so what do you want said about you? Um, 30 seconds, go. Oh, I want, I want people to say she loved Jesus with her whole heart, mind and soul. And she loved others as herself. And like, I know that sounds cheesy. I'm sure it's like um, already up there, but I say that because, uh, 
I know what it's like to do the right things and or like appear a certain way but then on the inside be like oh but I still want this in my life or god I want this or I'm complaining or I like and I also know what it's like to feel just super connected to God and flowing with him and like oh yeah god you you made it so simple Jesus like you came you you made it so simple and like yeah so um so good, so good. LB you're up LB um, my favorite Bible character is probably, probably David. And, um, he goes to fight Goliath. He picks up five smooth stones. He only used one of them that day. The first part of my life, I was one to be that, that David, but I realized what about the other four? So I've been studying that for about the last year. At the end of his life, he killed four giants through four people he raised up. He did not touch any of those giants, but yet he was accredited to killing all four of them. So I think I'm shifting in life to realize my job is not to kill anybody with the stones I've been given, but is to teach other people how to throw their stones to kill their giants. Wow, man. (laughs) Really good. Wow. So good. I I mean, yeah. And, and and LB really that that's what you've done with Helen and that's what coaching is. You know, we we use the definition of a coach from the 1500s. It's this covered carriage that takes people of importance from where they are to where they want to or need to go. And it's, it's what Jesus did. He, he, he got some guys and he said, Hey, let's go change the world. Just follow me. And they were imperfect and they were, they doubted and they, they, they lashed out at times, but man, for our viewers out there, man, we like, it's crazy. We did our first Facebook live and we were like, Oh, this will be cool. And we'll tell a story. And then we were like, dude, we just presented the gospel of who Jesus Christ is. And so I want to take a moment and just say, man, there's people out there that are, that are hella Morales and they're going, man, I I don't know where I'm at, but it's not enough. And I have all this anxiety and I can't perform at this level over and over. There's got to be more. God created you in his image and he wants you to be a reflection of who he is. And the only way we can do that is when we say yes and we surrender to that. And then you have LB who grows up in a home and who runs from all these things, but finally gets to a point to say, I have nowhere else to turn but to the person of of Christ who created this whole universe and spoke it into existence. So, man, I I don't know where you're at out there if you're listening. Uh, I don't even know if we have any listeners. I mean, maybe there's one person on, but I know that one person may be the next stone that LB was talking about there that's going to go change the world. Maybe it's a 16-year-old young lady who got in the sport of wrestling because of a trailblazer like Helen Morales said, Hey, we're going to do this and I'm going to do it well. And I'm going to be the image of Christ uh, as I do it. But man, if you, if you made it here, here's how the decision goes. Jesus makes it simple. It's a a three-step process to surrender. I always say, you know, surrender. The only time I've ever been taught to surrender is paintball, plug in the gun, safety on hands up. I'm out. Because if you don't say you're out, when you come behind from behind that barricade, the enemy will light you up. And so here's the three-step process to surrender when it comes to following after Christ. Jesus says it very clearly. He says, one, deny yourself. Realize it's not about you. Take up your cross. It's not going to be this life of elegance and easy, but it's going to be a life of joy and peace. And then he says this, follow me. Fix your eyes on me. How do you follow me? You plug into a local church. I know that Elevation Church, man, you can have access to them anywhere in the world. I was telling my buddy that today. Man, find someone to disciple you. We may use the word mentor uh, in, the, in worldly terms. Find someone to disciple you and then learn, learn, learn. It doesn't matter if you have a PE degree or a seminary degree. Man, when the Holy Spirit invades, man, God begins to reveal. So, Man, if you're out there and, and you, may, you say, hey, tonight, I want to say yes. I want to follow after. I'm going all in. April 1995 for this guy. We all have that milestone or marker. And maybe it's April 15th, COVID-19, 2020, that's your milestone or marker where you say, I'm going to put my full trust uh, in Jesus Christ. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to text the number. To, we want you to text this number, 46322. And then in the subject line, so the numbers 46322, and in the subject, we want you to put FCA 1474. FCA 1474, 
and then we want you to hit send. And here's what it's going to do. It's going to ask you a couple of questions, and we're going to get some resources in your hand. You heard Helen talk about, I needed resources. I needed, a, I needed someone in my life that was going to, we're not going to chit chat. We're going to dive into what it really means to follow after Jesus. You heard LB talk about, hey man, it's about diving into God's work, finding a church that you can plug into. And so we want to help you do that. You can also go to our, our, our website at fcawrestling.org. Uh, when our new study comes out, we would love to get that in your hands. For, I mean, above all else, if you're out there, and it's amazing to me because I grew up in a home where there were Bibles everywhere, and I'm, I'm grateful to have been led by unbelievable godly parents, but if you don't have a Bible, it's on us. It's on us. We will send you a Bible, all right? We will send you a Bible, and you can begin to study God's Word. My freshman year of college, a guy named Ronnie Stroud with Campus Crusade for Christ began to show me how to study the Bible and to dig into God's word and to pray it over my life. And so from our staff, that's all over the country, we want to make sure uh, that resource happens. Dude, dude I'll, I'll be honest, man, and I'm usually not at a loss for words. Like LB Helen, I don't even know how to like wrap it up, man. Like LB, give me, give me a final, I'm, I'm like, seriously, <laughs> I don't know how to end. I don't want to end. <laughs> help me, help me wrap it up. Give us a word man, of encouragement. I remember the first new pair of wrestling shoes I got. Uh, I was in I was in eighth grade because by then I had, all I had were hand me downs. <laughs> and but I, but those first pair of wrestling shoes I got, I never took them out of the box um, because I never never felt good enough to wear them. Wow. And I always felt like the kid who deserved hand me downs. Hmm. And that doesn't go away when you get a college degree or you get no. a, a mortgage or you have five campuses or 15 camp it you don't graduate out of that thing and what i would want to tell anybody out there that it's not feeling worthy to come into the presence of christ that's exactly why he died for you wow. and all of us would have a testimony of faith that said were it not for god where would we be i never thought i'd be sitting where i'm at in life and it's only evidence to the faithfulness of god and all of us would say that and so to that 16 year old or that um, 11 year old little version of me. Um, you, you're worthy of it. And God loves you for exactly who you are. You didn't stumble across this, um, this Facebook live by accident. It was a divine appointment and God wants you to surrender your life to him. And what a privilege for us to be part of that moment, that April 15th, you know, 2020 COVID-19, mm -hmm. like that day that God, God, that's it. So many lives. Helen, final thought. Come on, man. God. Man, um, to, to the young I lady, I, I don't think I can pull up after about Shelby. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I'd say the, the biggest thing, and I'm just thinking back to probably the most recent lesson I had to learn. I remember someone said, like, it's one thing to have it up here in your head, it's another thing to have it as heart knowledge. And uh, so I spent the last six months, and as silly as it sounds, because this is like post, you know, God helping me win a gold medal, bring me on this amazing journey, but I studied um, how and why God loved me. And it's so silly because kind of like Pastor LB says, there's some things that, um, that don't ever leave you. I think for me, it's like, I've had this idea that like, I have to be really successful to be loved, or I have to be really good at whatever it is I do. And that can produce a lot of good results on the outside, but it's not going to satisfy that, that void, that nagging um, thing on the inside. And so to, to anyone listening, um, we're, we're not just saying like God loves you because it's like we have to or something. It's like we've experienced for ourselves when you're just in that quiet moment and you just feel like, man, you just feel his, his love or his presence come over you. Or you just, you're reading in his word in Psalms 139, uh, just about how he made you and how precious are his thoughts about you. And you're like, man, the God that created the whole world has precious thoughts about me. And you can ask him like, why? And he'll, and like, he'll just tell you because okay. he loves you and he'll go into yeah. it. So that has totally changed my life. And it's freed me up from expectation from people, from myself to continue to perform. That's why wrestling is enjoyable now. Um, not because I win, but because I have no expectation because I'm going in as a girl that's loved and not a girl that's needing to earn love. Wow. Man, so good. My, my wife <laughs> sang a song Sunday morning in the first line of the song. It's actually like a country song, but it fit for Easter Sunday, but the first line said, shame is a prisoner. And man, how, how true in our lives, maybe you're out there and you just go, man, I, I just live in so much shame. Here's what, 
God wants to, to invite you out of hiding. He wants to bring someone with you on the journey to disciple you. He wants to connect you to the local church to help you take those grave clothes off so that, dude, you can be set free, set free. So here's what I'm going to do. There's only one way to, pr- to end this, like Mark, Facebook Live. We're going to pray it out because I truly believe, man, God is working. He's, he's working, and it's evident. He's working in my life. I, hey, Helen, thank you, LB. Um, thank, you. thank you, man, for, for, being, for dude, breathing it into me and, and for challenging me and encouraging me. I, I mean, if no one else got anything out of it, I, I promise you, I was challenged and encouraged tonight. So, Mark, pray for, pray for, pray for it, our viewers out there and every, everyone watching, man. Yeah, let's pray. Um, man, God, I just uh, we come before you tonight and just just thank you for this 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 Facebook Live that took place tonight. Thank you for um, just every person that tuned in tonight, Father God. I just pray that you you were speaking to them. You were speaking to them. Thank you for LB and Helen. Thank you for their heart, um, just to serve you, Father God, um, and to join us tonight. Um, thank you that you lead and guide our footsteps, Father God. Um, just thank you for this crazy sport of wrestling. Thank you. Uh, that's what brought us here together tonight. Um, use this father God, uh, for your glory, uh, be with each and every one of us as we depart tonight. Um, may we go to sleep tonight. Um, and just speak to us even tonight as we go to sleep on, on something that was said tonight. I thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Man, on behalf of FCA wrestling, man, thanks so much. We will See you next Wednesday night. It'll be April 22nd, COVID-19, Locked in Our Homes 2020. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. This is amazing. This and man, Pastor LB. It's like every time I talk to you. <laughs> All right. But, I, I but, just uh, stopped the live stream. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This was awesome. This was so cool for me. So I'm like, I, I'm blown away. <laughs> like, LB, man. Dude, th- I mean, I just want to say thanks for like, man, your testimony and just your, you know, your gifting. And I mean, so good, man. The, the world's got to hear, man. And it's not just here, man. It's, it's around the world, man. It's to, it's to all nations. So Helen, man, thank you. Your, your humility and your delivery, man. I mean, at the end of the day, there are certain people that God gifts with what you have. Not everyone has it. Not everyone needs it. Uh, I mean, we're, the, the, the body's many parts and we all need to play our part, but I, I want to affirm you and just encourage you to say, you are gifted. I'm raising three teenage girls right now and it is not easy in this world we live in, but my girls need to hear you. They need to hear you speak and they need to hear that God does work. Um, and so, man, from a, from a dad of three girls, man, thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Uh-oh. All right, dude, I don't want to end the meeting, but I've got to hit in at some point. Yeah. So we man, will. Thanks, thanks for letting us. Thanks for letting me be a part. Like, um, it, it's a privilege. If there's anything I can do to encourage support along the way, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing platform that you guys are preaching to people that aren't going to step into our doors. They're not. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I would affirm that Helen has been given a platform and to watch her walk this out with grace and dignity and humility. I would want my girls to pattern her faith Absolutely. and, uh, and it's the real deal. And so, uh, it's fun when you get to see people in ministry that they got, um, very impressive forward facing, but even more impressive off the stage. Yes. And so that, that's what I would speak over you guys. So thank you. It's a privilege. Dude, you're awesome. Mark, thank you, man. So oh, thank you guys so much. So grateful. This yeah. was I mean, all of them been great. This was, I mean, this was the most fun I've had. Helen, dude, I, we haven't even talked very much. You are I'm like I'm blown like, away. You're, you're incredible. I mean, I'm so grateful for you in the sport of wrestling, yeah. what you're doing for, for just women. I mean, in general, in the wrestling community, but just everywhere you go. I mean, you're, you're, you're special. God's got his hand on you and man, so grateful for you. So um, if there's anything, I don't know, but anything that FCA wrestling can do for you, mm-hmm. I mean, I know you've, you've helped with different things within FCA wrestling and, and uh, been a voice, but, but if there's anything I can ever do me personally or FCA wrestling, let me know. I mean, we're super grateful for you. And I seriously am blown away. I cannot believe your heart. And, and I heard that and LB said that, but i um, super grateful for you. So, and LB, I'll be in touch. Uh, I appreciate you so much, man. Uh, I just, 
if you guys don't know Heath and Helen, I mean, just even, I lost my brother-in-law last week and um, they're, uh, my in-laws are actually here tonight um, with, with my, with my wife, but uh, man, just, I mean, we've, we've stood on things, passages that we, that we talked about in scripture and, and just super grateful for you. So thanks so much. Love you. I, and I just want to say for FCA wrestling, you guys like, um, cause I know I, I talked to Medina and to Lauren and Jer uh, Jordan and Lauren. And, um, I think sometimes as athletes, we feel like if we do something talking about God, then we're like putting it down people's throats. Whereas when we work with an organization and like, we just get to come do this, it's so cool because this is like when I feel the most free to talk. Cause it's not like just me. It's like with a group of people and no one got full, you know? So it, it's like, the way that you guys work and that you exist and, and the camps that you guys do throughout the summer um that's just like it's been super awesome so however however i can help and pastor lb as always thank you for pouring into me all these years and um so yeah so it's nice to finally meet you heath and mark yeah you know facetime <laughs> but yeah this is really we, we will meet again hey love you yeah. guys thanks so much to god be the glory for real it's crazy i'm blown away lb thanks so much love you see you guys <laughs>